Ready? Everywhere they go, the games leave something behind. Good or bad, it's a multi-billion dollar calling card. And on this day, a backdrop for engagement photos. This sums it all up. This is London for us. <laughs> <laughs> Barry Bryden and Samira Young grew up here in East London, saw the transformation the games brought. Now they're raising their son right by the Olympic rings. It looked like a dump. Old really factories. See the to see the finish, it looks yeah. really amazing. And to live to in, live in the in village. village. It's like the icing on the cake. Well, the former yeah. athletes' village, yeah, it's, ama it's amazing. New homes by the thousands, and they're still building. It's the most tangible legacy of the 2012 Games, the East London regeneration that organizers promised. A way to justify the $20 billion price tag the most expensive summer games ever. If you just spend that money on two weeks of sport and, and if you include the Paralympics, four weeks of sport, um, people will feel that that's a, that's a waste. What we were always a, very clear about in London, this was about something that would be delivered over the next 20 years. London 2012 took into account its legacy from the start. Organizers swore there'd be no white elephants here. Nothing like Beijing's iconic bird's nest. It still looks the same, just sits empty most of the time. Not quite the eyesores from the Athens games or that flying saucer type building in Montreal. In London, the stadium that hosted the opening ceremony, it's now got a new vocation, home to the West Ham United soccer team. Nearby, the aquatic center looks like this, with kids getting just as much use out of it as the elite athletes do. Even the seating was designed to be reduced after the games. The model for what we're trying to do is to build a new city. Homes, jobs, recreation, leisure and sport. With development comes controversy, though. In Rio, it meant demolishing homes and favelas, here, continued construction is uprooting a vibrant artistic community, says this activist. Um, the public consultation and the awareness of what people really want uh, in the surrounding communities has been largely ignored. His gripe is with the speed of the development, not so much the venues themselves. There's been little complaint about sites like this man-made beach and fan zone for watching the Rio games. Although this once run-down part of East London has been transformed, the other big promise from organizers was that of a fitter Britain. Having the games here and increasing physical education programs got kids more interested in sports and dreaming of climbing the podium themselves. I would just run to my mom and say to her, Mom, I want my medal. And then she would just be coming up to me, hugging me and squeezing me. She's like, oh, you're so good. I've done it. They're doing the semi-finals now or the quarter. But this sports manager in the East End says since 2012, the government retooled sports programs and cut his funding. Britain's conservatives were dead set on austerity, so any immediate impact was short-lived. The legacy of uh, participation and really activation, uh, that, was, uh, that was lost. When the money runs out, that's when goals promised long before the games fade away. Remember the ugly state of Rio's waterways? They were to be cleaned up before the athletes arrived, but turns out Brazil couldn't afford it. Back in London, more construction around the Olympic Park is planned for years to come, so the jury's still out on the game's lasting legacy. Developers have promised more affordable housing, but in London, with its sky-high housing prices, the term affordable is relative, and lower-wage earners could be priced out of here altogether. That's worried the new mayor, who's demanding more fairly priced homes and says a big question mark hangs over the game's legacy in the meantime. This East End development watcher sees mixed results so far. So whereas we found the money to convert the stadium, we're not finding the money to, to meet kind of local needs, so there's a contradiction in there. The area seems better off than it was before. Sure, part of every host city gets a new look for the games. Thing is, the new look isn't always a good one. Four years on, this work in progress looks better than most. Thomas Dagg, CBC News, London.